broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo, and by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki No. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hiki No. Kino, Hawaii's new wave of storytellers. Aloha, and welcome to this week's edition of Hikino, Hawaii's new wave of storytellers. I'm Jasmine Tai, a senior at McKinley High School on Oahu. In this episode of Hikino, we'll see how Hawaii students are dealing with life in the pandemic as we navigate our way through the second semester of the 2020-2021 school year. We'll continue celebrating Hiki No's 10th anniversary by looking back at some of the landmark stories from the program's first decade. And we'll meet a Hiki no graduate from Roosevelt High School who today, at the ripe old age of 25, is the political reporter for the Japan Times. But first, here's my student reflection. Hi, I'm Jasmine Tai, a senior at McKinley High School on Oahu. I'm filming this on my home on January 20th, 2021, and today I'll be talking about my experience with online learning. Before the pandemic, I was always drained out, despising the thought of school. However, after the first quarter, I discovered that I actually enjoyed distance learning and was starting to have a lot of fun. I had put away my quiet public persona after being quarantined for five months, so staying in the same environment for online school resulted in me having an easier time communicating with others. My creativity for schoolwork started to spike. Like when I had a presentation for my AP class, instead of sticking to a boring old slideshow, I wrote out a script and voice acted it out instead. Now that quarter two is over, I finally found ways for me to enjoy school after 12 years. I became more in touch with my real self and developed good relationships with my peers. Although I don't know how I would be if things went back to normal, all I know is that with my own twist, I'll be able to make school more enjoyable thanks to the self-discovery that this pandemic brought me. Hi, my name is Marina Bell, a 7th grader from Highlands Intermediate School on the island of Oahu. I'm recording this from my house on January 24th, 2021. Sometimes you can't spend enough time with the ones you love. During a normal school year, my younger brother Teague and I would have the same schedule and the same amount of free time after school. But when classes went online due to COVID, our schedules and work habits were different, so it made it hard for us to find time to hang out with each other. Our parents expect us to do our best, so homework is important. Usually, I would do mine right after school, but Teague would play and then do his at night whenever I was free. I felt lonely. Unlike some of my friends who don't have the best relationship with their brother or sister, Teague and I are really close. He's my best friend. Sometimes, I would be watching TV and he'd come down to get a snack in the kitchen and ask, What are you watching? I tried to explain it to him. I know he doesn't understand because he makes a weird face, but at least he's listening. That's what counts. I took it upon myself to figure out a solution. I noticed that if I get my work done earlier in the day, I have more time after school to play with Teague. This small change made a big difference. I'm relieved because now I have someone I can talk freely with. I feel like I can just be myself around him without thinking about what I have to say. Spending time with my brother is important because time is precious, even in the middle of a pandemic. And now, in commemoration of the 10th anniversary of Hiki No coming up at the end of this month, Here's the seventh installment in a series of profiles on outstanding Yikino alumni. You know, I wanted to be a reporter since I was in elementary school back in Japan. He's just unique. He'll come in with his Wall Street Journal. And most people don't read the Wall Street Journal, even I don't. I was just dressing, dressing like old man and like holding a pile of newspaper. So 
Pikino for me was like a launching pad for me to uh, um, to get a start, to get a head start um, uh, in my journalism career. Uh, Pikino gave me opportunities to students like me um, who, again, whose English wasn't necessarily as perfect as native speakers, but it st still gave me a f fair opportunity. It still gave me a, um, the same playing field. We are back at Roosevelt High School in Makiki District of Oahu. Behind me is a football stadium. My first story at Hikino that I got to be involved in writing on an actual production was a story called so Brewing so Conversation. So and uh, it was about a coffee shop in downtown Honolulu um, that I found very fascinating. The unique flavors of Hawaii-grown coffee get a boost by Dennis's unique drip process. Each custom brewed cup does take at least three minutes longer than the mainstream coffee chain shops. I felt this is the project I learned how to craft a story and how to construct a story, how to tell a story to the people who have never been to that coffee shop. This was really one of the projects that I had to think a lot about these elements of storytelling. To hear about their origins, professions, as well as experiences they encounter. My mentor was Christy Young. She was a professional journalist at the time, so she gave me and the production team a lot of feedback. This is where I, we need to do better. This is where this is the area we need to fix. So when I saw the final product on PBS Hawaii, I was enthralled. And this was, I think, the first story uh, that I got to tell uh, based on what I had in my mind. This was really the starting point of, of my career as a reporter. Until, you know, before then, I had this, you know, vague idea, vague dream of, you know, this is what I wanted to do. But by actually accomplishing this project and then have the final product on the air, um, I got the taste of, okay, this is what, this will be the first of many more stories that I will be telling in the future. This is Satoshi Sugiyama for Hikino. By junior year that I, want, I knew I wanted to go to a journalism school, and I applied to Syracuse University in Syracuse, New York. Um, the university has a um, great journalism program. Luckily, I got accepted, and I actually got involved in a student newspaper, and then I interned at the Associated Press in Tokyo, Tampa Bay Times in St. Petersburg, Florida, and the New York Times in New York City. Uh, before I came back to Japan, and start working for the Japan Times as a, as a reporter. Yeah, so now I am a political correspondent of the Japan Times, which is an English daily national newspaper in Japan. Um, my day you know, starts with me usually waking up around 7.30, 8 o'clock, and I first go to, I cover the Prime Minister's office, the Parliament, and Foreign Ministry. Whenever there's a story that needs to be written, uh, one news analysis, I write that story from my desk at the Prime Minister's office, uh, Press Corps. At the age 25, when you write national political story, when I see my name on the paper, on the front page, you know, it still gives me chills. It, it is just that I cannot believe that I get to do this job, you know, at age 25. I, I just cannot believe it. No, I, I just wanted to kind of say that really, you know, really gave me a chance to shine and really gave me a chance to get a start with my career. And without the help, I, I would not be here. And I, I, I'd not be here uh, where I am. And I, I sincerely believe that. Hello there, I'm George Roy. I'm a sophomore at Kalaheo High School, and this is being filmed on February 1st, 2021.
My father, Brian Roy, is an airline pilot for Hawaiian Airlines. And recently, the travel industry has been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. There are many restrictions and fears of flying that affect the overall industry and threaten the jobs of many. There are precautions in place such as requiring masks and sanitizing key touch points to help prevent the spread of the virus. This also affects how my father operates his job. He now routinely wears a mask and wipes down many surfaces. He also now packs hand sanitizer, rubber gloves, and many masks. This also has affected my father on a personal level. As a pilot, he interacts with the traveling public and he cannot work from home. Since he is considered a frontline essential worker, he has got the first injection of the COVID-19 vaccine to help life return back to normal. I applaud him for how hopeful and optimistic he has been in these recent months. Continuing our celebration of 10 years of Hiki No, here's a story from our archives by students at Waianae Intermediate School. It's an excellent example of what has become a popular theme of Hiki No stories. Don't judge a book by its cover. And when I win, I get excited and happy. 13-year-old Chardonnay Luning has been competing in beauty pageants since she was four years old. One time we went with my cousin and I seen her on stage with her dresses and her mom doing her makeup and I wanted to try putting on makeup and doing putting on dresses. Okay, so this process normally takes 30 minutes. Since then, Chardonnay has participated in 45 pageants and has won about 15 crowns. But tiaras aren't the only type of crown this beauty queen wears. Not all girls, like, they play sports. They play sports like basketball and baseball, but I don't think anyone would play a physical contact sport. That sport is tackle football. And according to the National Federation of State High School Associations, less than 1% of girls play it. We don't cut Chardonnay any slack, even though she's a girl. I mean, we work her hard, just like any other boy on the team, and we treat her just like anybody else. Chardonnay has played on the Waianae Tigers Junior Midgets Pop Warner football team for two years now as an offensive guard and cornerback. Let's go! But she didn't just learn the rules of the game. As the only girl on the team, football has taught her how to tackle challenges both on and off the field. The boy on the football team didn't like me because I was a girl playing football. So he would pick on me when I got to practice, and during practice he would push me, hit me, and say mean things to me. It made me feel sad sometimes, but there were all the other people on the team that, that kept giving me positive advice. One of those people was her coach, who taught her a valuable lesson. Ignore the people that are mean to you and try your best to enjoy what you do because you enjoy doing it. She's a hard worker. I really love her. She's tough. She really shaped the boys up on this team. Facing the boys also required Chardonnay to tap into her pageant experience, a trick she learned from her mother. The best advice my mom gave me was to never give up and try your best, to have fun at what you're doing. Because in pageants, things don't go your way. Football is the same. There are there are times that you win and times that you lose. No matter what the outcome, Chardonnay knows the most important thing is to have fun. You mess up, but if you try, try your best at what you're doing, then in the outcomes are better. Trying her best and handling problems with grace is what makes Chardonnay a definite beauty on stage. Like a movie star. But a beast on the field. Go. This is Amy Nevis from Waianae Intermediate School for Hikino. Hi, this is Chloe Pacheco, a junior at Lelahua High School on the island of Oahu. I'm recording this at my home on January 28, 2021. At first, I was super excited to have fun with my friends when spring break was extended, like a lot of students. But COVID happened and affected my life and my family's too. My 102 year old grandfather wasn't directly affected, but because his immune system isn't that strong, he doesn't go out as much as he used to. 
My sister is a medical assistant, and she puts herself at risk every single day to help the doctor treat patients. But really, it was my mother who was really affected the most. She's a single parent and was temporarily laid off for nine whole months due to the closure of hotels. Seeing all the struggles that my family was going through made me realize that maybe I should try to relieve their stress and worries. So lately, I've been sanitizing high touch surfaces. I helped my mom learn the basics of using a computer to help apply for unemployment insurance. And I even help connect to her Zoom meetings. Helping my own family has encouraged me to want to help other people too. So I've been trying to give back to my community by volunteering at food banks at my church. I really enjoy it because people are just so grateful and humble even after they've been waiting in long lines stuck in their car. This pandemic has really opened my eyes and it gave me a sense of duty. I know it's been hard on a lot of families, but helping us come together as a community brings us hope that life will go back to normal. Continuing our celebration of 10 years of Hikino, here is another story from the first decade of the program that cautions us not to judge a book by its cover. This one is from students at Maui High School. Maui High School Junior Varsity Cheerleader, Chantel Sandoval, spends her weekend spreading cheer. But what makes this extraordinary is the fact that Chantel is legally deaf. Here's Chantel speaking through an interpreter. I was just born that way. When she, my mother gave birth to me, um, she almost died. And then, I don't know, I um, became deaf. Her deafness, however, has not denied her from pursuing her dream of cheering in front of a crowd. Cheering was something I always wondered about, and I just wanted to know if I could make the team. However, Chantel's journey to becoming a cheerleader for her school was not an easy one, even with the help of sign language interpreters who helped facilitate communication between Chantel and her coach. Because anybody else I can yell, point your toes, lift your shoulders, keep your head up, anything like that. But if I try to yell at her to do those things, she doesn't understand, So, or she doesn't hear me. So that's the biggest thing, is just trying to get her to really understand what I'm saying. As of recently, hearing her teammates and coaches just became easier, thanks to the help of a cochlear implant, a surgically implanted medical device that provides a sense of sound to a person who is deaf or severely hard of hearing. Before I got my cochlear, I could still speak for myself and I could, um, I used hearing aids, but still, it was still hard for me and I would miss a lot of the information. And many people would talk and probably say, speak behind me and, and I could understand that. Since I've got cochlear, I can understand them a little bit more and I'm, my hearing is improving. While cochlear has made cheering an easier task for Chantel, the negative stigma surrounding deaf people still remains. Many people feel very awkward and they avoid deaf people and they don't offer help like in a store. They tend to just ignore you. I feel like really, I feel really hurt. I feel like insulted. And just because I'm deaf, it doesn't mean that I'm ignorant. Though Chantel has to navigate around these obstacles, she embraces the fact that she is deaf. No, deaf people can do anything. It doesn't matter if they can't hear. Just like hearing people, like, ugh, what if they couldn't walk? Or if they couldn't, you know, does that mean they can't do anything? No, they can do anything with a wheelchair. It's the same thing for deaf people. We can't hear, but we can do anything we want. But Chantel wants to make one thing clear. Do not call her impaired. Well, I don't like the word impaired. It means something's broken. And I'm not broken, I'm only deaf, and I was born that way. Don't call me hearing impaired, call me deaf. 
Chantel Sandoval is living proof that a communication challenge does not have to keep anyone off the sidelines. She plans to continue to spread the Sabre spirit as loud as she can. This is Sydney Green from Maui High School for Hiki No. Aloha, I'm Emma Tilly Tilly, a senior from Waianae High School, coming to you from the west side of Oahu. Since the beginning of the pandemic, my high school began to conduct online learning to ensure the safety of its faculty, students, and the community. Distance or online learning is an efficient and cautious way to provide students the education they need. However, students encounter numerous assignments while maintaining priorities at home and find it difficult to concentrate in an environment where they are easily distracted. But I noticed that students are not the only group of people who are struggling through the technological endeavors of distance learning. Teachers have altered lesson plans, projects, and put in the effort to adjust teaching styles in order to make their students feel more comfortable and engaged. One teacher that I know who is trying her best to boost students' morale is Ms. Davis. Morning, Lacey. How's it going? As one of the senior class council advisors, she seeks to ensure the seniors are still able to enjoy their last school year and feel united as a class. As she, along with some other motivated teachers and students, organized multiple class activities, such as social media campaigns, cap and gown packet pickups, gift exchanges, and class t-shirts and masks, these tasks proved difficult at times as we were limited to virtual meetings and emails. Virtual encounters had sometimes led to a lack of interaction as some students did not feel motivated to participate in class activities. As one of the many students who continued to undergo the challenges of distance learning, I appreciate all of the effort that Ms. Davis and all of our teachers are putting into giving students a well-rounded education. I know that they will continue to give their best so that by the end of this school year, we will finish strong. Bye, Miss. Bye. As we continue our look back at 10 years of Hikino, here's yet another story about not judging a book by its cover. This one comes from Eva Makai Middle School on Oahu. I had a student in here who told me, you know, Mrs. Martin, last year, I hated you. I said, really, you hated me? Still hate me now? He goes, no. I'm like, so what's the difference? How come you don't hate me anymore? And he said, because I got to know you. Mrs. Jerry Martin, a vice principal at Eva Mackay Middle School in Eva Beach, has a reputation for being the toughest administrator at the school. However, she has grown accustomed to the thought of students calling her mean and being frightened by her. I think there are students that think I am mean. The rumors that people said about Miss Martin was that she's mean and like the way that she used to look at them was like, like they didn't like it. I thought she was kind of strict and harsh. Despite what students may say, Mrs. Martin's mission goes much deeper. Growing up, I didn't like the way my life was. And uh, I was a very, very angry person. And being an angry person, um, if anybody looked at me the wrong way or said the wrong thing, I'd lose it. I had a really bad temper. And took my anger out on, on people and they didn't deserve that. And had to take responsibility, and now um, realizing that I had hurt so many people, promised that I would do everything I can to, instead of hurt people, help. To make up for her past mistakes, Mrs. Martin began serving her community by coaching sports in hopes of helping others. When I was involved with community sports, there were a lot of students who, who didn't have family that would come to their games. Um, they'd be embarrassed at potluck, on potluck days because they wouldn't be able to bring anything. And um, so it was those, those individuals that um, I took in that would come home with us and, and stay. And sad thing is some of their some of their families wouldn't even call to check on them. But um, I think being able to, 
to not just take care of my sons, but to be able to take care of the greater family, which is the community. Although some students may think that Mrs. Martin is harder on them, she only wants to steer students towards the right path. She helped me with problem situations, like when I fight with other students in school, and I always get put in her office. She always like tells me stories about the same thing that I'm in, and that I'm not the only one who's in this situation. Even though you think that she's mean, she's not. She's a very caring person. For me, every individual matters. Every individual has the potential and the right to be happy and successful. Even though Mrs. Martin may be tough on the outside, her caring nature shows students that we can all grow from our mistakes. Thank you. This is Christina Overly from Emma Kai Middle School for Hiki No. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Hiki No. We hope you've enjoyed these stories from Hawaii's new wave of storytellers as much as we've enjoyed presenting them to you. Be sure to tune in next week for more student reflections on life and school under COVID-19. And for our continuing look back at the first decade of Hiki no Can Do. Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo, and by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki No. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hiki no.